We are continuing on Shulcha Aruch Orachayim Echot Filin, and we are in Siman Lamed Het and regular Mishtaburas and Daf Samech Hey Amud Bet, and we are starting Sif Dalit right now. Maran writes. A person that puts on tefillin does not only need to have a gufna ki, the way we explained before of not needing to go to the bathroom, and of course not letting gas and so on, which we have discussed at length, but also the machshava has to be, the thoughts have to be clear and clean as well. Hence, the concept of not having hirhurim, um, ra'im, at the time that the person has to fill in on him, of course, Hirurim Ra'im is always Asur. Uh, technically speaking, you could end up with four Isurim, the Oraita and the Rabbanan, for just a Hirur. The, the Tosafot understand that when the Gemara says, Shelo Yahar Her Bayom, Veavolide Tum'ah Belayla, is a full fledged drasha that the person should not have. Uh, negative thoughts of promiscuity and erva, lust and such and such thoughts in, in their mind and that would be um, constituting a full-fledged biblical prohibition in that level so th- says Maran aside from that regular thing it would be a isur for putting on tefillin an additional isur because your mind has to be clear and, and clean. By the way, this is the reason that Chacham ben Zion Abba Shaul, Alaba Shalom, his students in Chalak Bet Avor Letzion, they write that a person that's not married yet should not put on the feeling of Rabbi Enutam, because the Benish High writes, Alaba Shalom, that um, ha- for somebody that puts on Rashi and Rabbi Enutam, this is a greater Isur. So hence, even though that you find the Chabad Hasidim, when they become Bar Mitzvah, they already have Rashi and Rabbi Enutam, right? The reason is because they take the Ariya Kadosh and Zohar Kadosh uh, very seriously and say, well, Rashi and Rabbeinu Tam are both needed, as we have spent a lot of time on that. So why, when I become Bar Mitzvah, why wouldn't I put them from day one? Now, Chacham as we mentioned before, he does not follow that path of the Mekubalim, and so to Chacham ben Siona Bashaul. And they say, like Maran said, that it's, a, it's a Chashuva Chumra, it's important Chumra, but it's a Chumrah nevertheless. We pass in the Aracha is like Rashi, that the Tefillin of Rashi, which is based on Mechilta, is the Ikar. The Rabbeinu Tam, which is based on Yerushalmi and Kachim, is not the way we pass in the Aracha. There are two separate ways of understanding the Mitzvah Tefillin. Each holds the other one is Pasul. And we do both of them, those who are Muxak Vachasidu, those who are pious individuals, they do both of them in order to be covering all your bases. That's the reason we do. Of course, we are mindful also of the Kabbalistic writings. So that's additional reason why we do them. We do them. But nevertheless, the Ikar Alakha is like the Pashtalim, that both of them are not a necessity. We do it as a Khumra. So hence, says Chacham when you have even a Safik, that a person may not have a clear mind, better to stay away from it until you, uh, you know, a person gets married, and so on. And that became kind of like the accepted practice within the Sephardic communities, because both Chacham Obadiah and Chacham Mishon Abashaul, both of them really asserted like this in, in their halachic um, works of Harvadi and Halechot Olam writes this first, and uh, Rabbi Surah Bashaul's students write this in Or Letzion Chelek Bet. Therefore, it has become the minhag. And so the Rama adds, this is so important that if a person cannot hold back from, from having impure thoughts, mutav better not to put on tefillin. Can you imagine? A, even though that we say machshava ra'a ena kadosh baruch hu mesarfa lemaase, but nevertheless, it's not a pure mind, and a pure mind is what's necessary for putting on tefillin. So therefore, a person should be careful and mindful of this as well. Now, the Mishnah Burayin Ot Yudalat says what we basically explain, that you have to be careful because Bainan Gufna Kigam Mi Machshava Ra'a Shlo Lani Chamu Mikol Makom Yireh Bechol HaYecholet Lachof Adatzmo He says, even though that the Ramas is better not to put them if you don't know, if you could control yourself, he says, of course, best would be try to force yourself to have a clean mind and Yimshoch Alev Le'irat Shamayim 
Rambam writes a beautiful thing. By the way, let's just remember, this is, this is such a powerful Rambam. Rambam writes, a person that has machshevet avera, what he should do, he says he should be a messiah da'at from it. Don't think about it and learn Torah. When your mind is empty, there's no such a thing as empty, right? Abor rek embo mayim, if there's no Torah, if there's no mayim, it's filled with negativity. That's how a person is. So the way to combat this is not um, not to think about it, right? As the Gibara says, we're going to have this in Brachot upcoming of one of the Goish authorities asked one of the Amoraim, if you really are Hacham, tell me what I'm going to dream about tonight. So he told him something of impossibility. Imagine like a, an elephant that passes through a hole of a needle. Right? So this guy says, how is that possible? Elephant passing through a hole of a needle. The whole day he was thinking about how it's possible. So he just dreamt about it at night. Right? So he was just a hacham was a genius. was a, smart because he knows when you try not to think of, a, of, of something, you're going to be thinking about it. So the way to do it is not that. The way to do it is replace it with something positive. Learn Torah. Say Tehilim Balpeh. Right? Choose something that really, really speaks to you. And every moment that you have, the Vilna Gaon used to say a person should know uh, at least one Masechta by heart. Why? Because all the things, first of all, that becomes your Olam Haba Masechta. Secondly, because... Then when you have, you realize how many minutes a day you have that you're doing absolutely nothing. You're walking. You're sitting in the car, doing nothing. You could be chazering, if you know it by heart. You could be doing, learning, walking, learning. You're in the car driving, learning. Baruch Hashem, now you could be listening to, um, to Hazarav of, of your shi'ur, whatever else. And maybe it's easier. But so many minutes of the day a person is doing just nothing. And you could be growing in those minutes. So that's what the Vilna Gaon said, but I find it very powerful that you have a Mishnah, Mishnayot, it's a few Mishnayot by heart, or Halachot, or, or, or Gemara, or just Mizmore Teilim. It's a powerful Mizmorim of Teilim that speaks to you. You know it by heart, and you, and you say it, you fill in the gaps of your mind with positivity, and that by itself is Ayelet Avim Ve'alat Chen, says the Rambam, you fill up your mind with good thoughts, and that by itself pushes away the negativity to uh, a point beyond the point of no return, hopefully, that they're not going to return to you um, anymore. Again, this is, this is something that um, the Ramban speaks about this, the Ramban says, this is something ironic. Again, this is not a Mishnah Bura thing that becomes a Musa Shemuz, but it's important nevertheless. The Ramban says, and I said this once, one of my students pulled up a, um, a research in English, had nothing to do with Jewish sources at all, but it was almost like somebody had translated verbatim the passage from the Ramban. Ramban writes, Ever katanish ba'adam, the nature of a person's desire and tava, any physical tava, but promiscuity and the head at the top of the list is in an ironic way. We think the more you satiate something, the more satisfied it becomes. It's exactly the opposite. Mas bi oraev marivo savea. The way Chazal say it is ever katanish ba'adam. You have a small limb in your body that when you satiate it, it becomes more hungry. When you starve it, it becomes it becomes full and satisfied. And Rahman explains, he says, you know, the, the, the more you starve it, the less of, of engagement you have with that, the, the more it diminishes. Actually, it's a Sefer, one of the Sefer Akanem, one of the Gedolea Mekubalim of the Rishonim, he has a method of seven years of practice, really, that you could kill your Yetzirah. We say this about David Amelech. David says, Libi halal bekirbi, that I've killed my Yetzirah. Right? David Amelech says, you know, I've, I've managed to kill my Yetzirah. And the Mara actually takes this very seriously, asks questions on it, answers it, and so on. But nevertheless, uh, Rabbi Sion Hazan, the Talmud of Ben Ishchai, writes in the Akdama that was printed to a sefer of Kabbalah that Ben Ishchai wrote called Da'at Utvunot. He writes there that Ben Ishchai actually accomplished this. Um, difficult exercise of seven years 
of, of diminishing and, and destroying a person's yetzara. I do this like this because it, yetzara is a parasite. If you don't feed it, it doesn't have its own source of living. Every time that you give into it, it attaches to your pipe of, of shefa. And the more you give it, the bigger it becomes. It starts becoming smaller, it becomes bigger. The more you starve it, the more it diminishes, it shrinks, and it, it, it dies, basically. Of course, it's overly simplified. These are highest, higher concepts and, and so on. But nevertheless, the Ramban's explanation is, first the person wants um, tava, desire, within boundaries of halacha. Chupa bekidushin. But instead of having one wife, what's wrong with two? Right? Halachically speaking, without harem the Rabbeinu Gershom, would be mutar. Right? Really, the Sfaradim is not so clear, even if they accepted harem the Rabbeinu Gershom. And even if they did, maybe after five, the year 5000, it doesn't apply. I wanted the big Rabbani Mitar, actually his father had two wives. And I, I, my understanding is 24 children. Right? And again, everything with Chupab, Kiddushin, one wife, two wives, three wives, four wives, five wives. Four at least, right? And then, mm-hmm. says the Rambar, at some point when you don't stop it, when you don't say Atkan, at some point that, that doesn't cut it anymore. Now you don't desire Nashim Mutarot, as he calls it. Now you desire illicit relationships. You want an Eshid Ish, or someone that's Asur. Right? And that's what gives you happiness. And says Ramban, if a person doesn't stop it there, then it, it comes to a point that even that doesn't cut it anymore. It's like dopamine, basically. Which it is. We know nowadays, we know how to explain it. It's like dopamine. It doesn't cut it anymore. And now you need, he says, something more exotic, more crazy. And says Ramban, you start with a, a desire for mishkav zakhar, for same-sex relationships. And the Ramban writes, if you don't stop it even there, you get to a place that you desire intimacy with animals. And then he says, he says, this is something that when you started your journey a few years back, if someone would talk to you about that, you would be abhorred and disgusted. Something that you wouldn't even be ma'ale ala dat, and it all of a sudden became a desire for you because that's how the nature of desires are. It's not just, again, by, by promiscuity. It's every desire. Food is the same. Every desire, we call it, in our sophisticated world, we call it addiction. And that's the psychology of addiction. That's how it works, right? And again, it was unbelievable that someone about you know, illicit relationships and promiscuity, someone actually pulled an article that said it exactly in that way. I don't, I'm not sure if they had seen the Ramban. It was a Goish article. But I said it exactly the same way, explaining it, of course, with, with the, within the, the barometers of, um, mm-hmm. of psychology and, and hormones and dopamine and so on and so forth. But it said it exactly in that, in that way. Now, so that's the way to, to, to d- diminish it is to stay away and, po- and fill, it with po- fill your mind with positivity and exercise self, self-restraint, which is, again, what... Um, what the Mishnah Brura is mentioning over here, that a person could work on their, themselves and on the Yirat Shamayim, and the Ben Ishchai and Kafachayim, both of them write that when, when you think of the Yud Gimel Midot of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, you really think and ponder and you learn about them, maybe with the Farshim, and you um, spend time on, on thoughts about that, it gives you Yirat Shemaim. Of course, in Siman Aleph, you remember, those who were with us in the beginning, you remember that B'Shem Ariya Kadosh, the Mishnah Burah brought, that if you think of the name of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Yud Kei Vavke, being written with the, um, with the Nekudot of Yirah, as if it's written in Shamaim with Esh Shechora Al Gabe Esh Levana, that also is a skula for Yirat Shamaim. Fine, so there are different segulot, but the main thing is, we are am segula, we love, we love segulot. That's, uh, you know, that's what it is. But, but the truth is, the greatest segula is the simplest one. Fill it up with goodness. Fill it up with Torah. Every time, every time that the person has, instead of doing narashka, the nothingness, you know, fill it up with the Torah. 
walk, walk around with a Mishnah, a pocket Mishnayot, a pocket Tehillim. And whenever you have a moment, just pull it out and start saying Tehillim. Don't even rely on the Tehillim that you have in your phone or whatever. But now, but people, Baruch Hashem, have some, with Talmudo Biyado, they have the entire Shas and, and whatnot in their hands, literally in the palm of their hand. But it doesn't cut it sometimes. Sometimes you need the actual physical print. You know, to pull it out, sit and learn to yilim. Sit and finish, finish something and th- think and talk to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. That's something that develops a person's Yad Shemayim to that level, which is um, just amazing and tremendous. So it says, um, Maran in Sifhei, we have spoken about this briefly in a different context by the Rahman Litzlan, a mourner that has just buried their one of the seven close relatives, which is either father, mother, daughter, son, brother, sister, and spouse. Those are the seven close relatives. One of those that the person is Hayav to keep the laws of mourning and Avelut, Rahman Litzlan. In the first day is patur, is asur to put on tefillin. We learned this in Gemara Masechet Mot Katan from a pasuk in Yechazkel HaKadosh Baruch Hu, telling Yechazkel HaRavi that his wife is going to pass, pass on. He says, Percha chavosh alecha, that you should, you should wear your tefillin, which the Gemara learns that all the other people do not wear tefillin the first day, and therefore it was needed for Hashem to tell Yechazkel HaRavi, wear your tefillin, and even in the first day. So it says, the Shukharuch, the first day is Asur to put on Tefillin. Now, what is considered the first day, by the way? It's questionable, right? Well, does the first day mean first day that the, the close relative passed away and the same day you buried? Or the first day means the first day of burial, even despite it not being the day of passing? Which, again, nowadays this becomes very much Nogaya because. Many people want to the family and the the mishpacha uh, to gather from all around and fly in and whatever. You know, we live in a village of a world that everyone is connected and flights and airplanes and so on. So, oftentimes, also we have morgues and we have uh, we could refrigerate refrigeration of the body allows for later dates and so on. In Yerushalayim, even today, the the law the halacha is in Yerushalayim en malinin met bi Yerushalayim. Even if somebody passes away at night, that night they bury them. It is a gadol ador, not gadol ador, doesn't make a difference. In Yishalayim, no burial is done day after. Regardless of what time it is, they do it that night. Right? But outside, you know, sometimes for the kavod of the mat is mutar. Normally speaking, it's not mutar. You should do it as soon as possible. That's one of the other reasons of, you know, Carefully choosing the cemetery that accommodates the alachot, which this this is one of them, but nevertheless, sometimes for the kavod of the the deceased, you want to wait a little bit. So you have this happening often that the day of the burial is not the day of of the passing. So what is the alacha then? Is that considered the day, yom rishon, or is that not considered yom rishon? Are you a patur and asur from tefillin, or are you not? Which we're going to discuss right now. Mikan Vailach says the Shukharuch from here and on, Chayav Afiru Bau Panim Hadashot. From there and on, you are Chayav to put on Tfilin, even if new people come to console and that kind of like brings up new memories about the deceased and, you know, kind of like rehashes the whole Avelut, but still a person is Chayav to put on Tfilin after the first day. So, the Mishnah Bura writes in Otetzayin, Biyom Rishon Perush Afilu Biyom Shenikbar She'eno Yom Amita. Even if that is the day that he did not pass away, passed away already before, but today is the first day of Kivura, of burial, says the Mishnah Bura, that that's you're st- still Asur from putting on Tfilin. Kevan Shu Yom Rishon Avelut, because Avelut starts from burial. The laws of mourning starts from the day of burial. Therefore, even if it's not the day of passing, says the Mishnah Burah, that first day you're asur to put on tefillin. Therefore, even if last night the body was buried, imagine Yerushalayim, but they do it at night, tomorrow morning is considered his first day, because 
Yom Holech Achara Laila. In Judaism, the night, day goes after night. So already, when it was buried, that's the start of the day. Tomorrow morning is the continuation of that day. It's considered Yom Rishon. You don't put on tefillin. Avalimet on nikbar b'chol moed, But if he died or was buried on chol moed, maniach tefillin ben chol moed. Then you put on tefillin, both in chol moed and afterwards, the primagadim, um, disagrees with this. It's not so simple. But nevertheless, um, the, the Sephardi poskim, the Ben Ishchai, Kafachayim, or Lesion, all of them, they agree with this Mishnah Bura, that even though the, the, the day of burial is not the day of passing, you're asur to put on tefillin. Ben Ishchai says like this, Chacham Ben Zion, Abashaul, Alav Shalom says the same thing. Kafachayim, Alav Shalom says the same thing. But Chacham Obadiyah disagrees. How about yes, is because of the machloket that exists over here, that there are those who say that the day of the burial, if it's not the day of passing, is no longer Yom Rishon, says Chacham but yeah, put on tefillin, but don't say bracha. The first day of burial, which is not the first day of passing, says Chacham yeah, do it, be choshesh for those who say it's not the first day, because it's mitzvah oraita, you don't want to miss. Um, you don't want to miss on a mitzvah oraita. Therefore, put on tefillin. Says Chaum Badia, but do not say a bracha on it. So that's the machloket that we have. Basic, basic machloket between Chaum Badia and Ben Ishchai, but it's not really Ben Ishchai only. It's Kafachayim. Or it's, all of them say you're asur to put on tefillin. So therefore, completely absolved. But says, now put it because of the safek, but don't say bracha also not to get yourself into a sticky situation. But if the body was buried on Ben Hashemashot in twilight, when it's safek yom, safek laila, then Chachamabadiyah says, is like somebody that was buried during the day. So therefore tomorrow morning, you no longer have to, um, to consider it the same day, and therefore... After Netzach Hama already, you put on tefillin, and you even say bracha says Chacham Obadiah on that case. Because here, you have a case that you, it, it's not even clear if it was in the same day. It was yesterday, maybe. Right? And that day finished. So you have those who say first day that it was not day of the mitah, day of dying, right? day of passing, is not the same day as Kivura. That those poskim who say you have to say anyways, you have to put on tefillin on the day of Kivura. And even that is not clear if the day of Kivura was yesterday or today because it was in twilight. Hence, says Chaubad, yeah, you put on tefillin and you even could say bracha on it as well. Okay, wonderful. Says the Mishnah Brura, continues. Afshu yom rishon la'avidut Mikol makom kvar nichabu merachamin Even though that after chola moed Is going to be the first day of avidut for the person that, that was buried like that in chola moed But nevertheless <coughs> The avidut is no, no longer as painful Because people have come, people have paid their, their, their respects And memories and all that It kind of has subsided that feeling of um, avidut Therefore it's not fresh and you put on tefillin the first day already afterwards, for sure, according to everyone that's just finished the seif over here. Therefore, im shama shmua kerovah. If you hear shmua kerovah, which means within the thirty days of passing, you heard that one of the relatives has passed, even on the day of thirtieth, even on the thirtieth day, you hear it. Gam kendi no it's considered like the day of Kivura. Even if you heard it at night. Even if you heard it at night. You should not put on Tfilin during the day. Even if you are in the middle of Shaharit and someone is not smart and comes and tells the person that one of his relatives has passed on, even though that they passed on three weeks ago, so, by the way, did you hear, uh, you know, so and so passed away? So the guy, it, it's Shmuakirova within 30 days, and he hears it, and he has Tfilin on right now. He has to take them off right away, right? Even if he has put on Tfilin, 
and you start feeding Chol Tzad. You take them off, says the Mishnah Bura, and you start your Halachot of, of Avelut, and again, Sorry? Yes, correct. Because that's considered Shmuar Kiruba. Now, Shmuar Rechoka is after, if you heard it after 30 days. Ve'im Shama Shmuar Rechoka, Da'anu La'achar Shloshim, She'en Ha'avilut Rak Sha'achat. Then the Halakha is, the Ha'avilut is Mashu, Sha'achat. I don't have seven days. You don't keep in, in that way. Mutar La'aniach Tfilin. Then it's Mutar to put on Tfilin. Ve'chor Shkel She'en Sarich Lechol Tzalan. For sure, you don't have to take them off. If somebody came and told someone in the middle of Shaharit, Oh, do you know that uh, you know your relative passed away a month and a half ago? He doesn't have to take take off the tefillin. Valken in balo hashmua beemtza pesukei dezimra. Therefore, if he hears about this in the middle of pesukei dezimra, lo yachalotz atfilin rak yachalotz min alav. He should not take off his tefillin. He just should, should take off his leather shoes to do avelut for one moment for a shaakala. But if he starts crying, if it's so emotional for him that he starts crying, then you have to take off the feeling because then your mind is not on the feeling anymore. And you, you need to have mind on the feeling. So therefore, if it's so emotional still for him that even given that the, fa- that the fact that it's Shumar Chokka, he loses it and he's not, he loses his composure and, and, and he's, he's crying, then he should take off the tefillin. Kedmuchach mi de'am, as we say in the Chod Avelud, in Siman Shem Pehed mi de'am, and later on in Siman Taf Bet, v'ayin lekaman b'sif. Asur, the tefillin niklayim per v'pasuk, v'avel me'olel be'efer, v'en na'e latet per tachat efer. So, because the, the avel, the first day, they are banging on their head and crying and they're out of control and sometimes putting dust and dirt on their head and, and so on. They go on the floor, but the kivura, whatever. So therefore, it's not proper for them to have the crown of tefillin when they're out of control in that way, emotionally not tuned. Um, it's not proper for tefillin to be, to be used. Mikan ma'elach, but afterwards, he puts on tefillin, even though that's still amidst the days of Avelut, um, he still puts on tefillin, as the pasuk says, v'acharitah ke'omar, Shwamina de Ikar Merirut Hu Yom Rishon. The Gemara says the Yom Rishon, we just had the Gemara in Amud Yomi, that the Yom Rishon is the Oraita of the root of Yom Rishon, the rest of it is, is more Kal, and therefore it will be Hayaf to put on Tfilin right away. We have Poskim de Yom Sheni, and the Aniach Kodemanets. There are those Poskim who say even Yom Sheni, you shouldn't do it before Netzachama, you shouldn't do it early on from Adot Shachar, wait until Netzachama. Therefore, says the Mishnah Bura, the best would be to put it on after Netzachama. So don't daven nets basically on the second day, right? That becomes an afkamina for those uh, who always are nets people. And Rahman is to become avelim according to the pesach of the Shukharuch. The second day, they should wait. Um, I'm putting on tefillin, even the more daven nets without tefillin. That's a question, but but the maaseh they should wait until um, Netzachama for putting on tefillin. Um, and, and, and then only afterwards put it on, to which the Ben Ishchai agrees and Kafachayim agrees with this as well. Um, that you know, the, the Kafachayim does write that you could be Mekel to put them right before nets, but Haravadia says that um, you should not put it before nets altogether, right? So, again. The Kafachayim says if you can't daven betzibur, if you don't put it out before nets, put it before nets and daven betzibur. Arvadia says you should just not put it because of the safek that you have of Yom Rishon, the whole Yom Rishon. Maybe this is considered still um, a, a par- part of the Isur. So therefore, Arvadia says do not, even the second day, do not put it before uh, nets hamam. And um, that becomes really something that's nogea for people who dominates all, all the days, that becomes something to, to be mindful as well. And Bezat Hashem will continue and start the next Eve in the days to come.